Welcome back fellow cardboarders and a warm welcome to all my new subscribers who have joined us on our way to 50 subscribers and beyond. Today a little video about my current state of my antiquities set queue. It should currently have around 220 cards and I just wanted to have my current state on camera so that people can see the growth during the next couple of months and also be able to see how long this can take and that such a set cube is not built throughout a week or a month. Now let's put those two piles aside and look into the first pile, the white cards. Antiquities has seven different cards in each color. One card that is missing is Damping Field, which I still don't have. It is a U3, which for the set cube means that I actually do need three of. U2s I need two and U1s I will need one of, which is in this case the Argivian Archaeologist, which I already have, as you can see. Um, it's in a very nice condition. I'm glad I have this I just bought it just before the buyout hit and I think I paid like 170 maybe euros for that card and now it's uh, over 200. I have a couple of Argivian blacksmiths, uh, eight as you can see. These are C4 cards which means on the common sheet they appeared four times as often as other commons. Antiquities has C4, C2s and C1s on the sheet. So that means we have four Argivian blacksmiths for every two C2s. A C2 would be, for example, a Wurzer's Tower, the forest version here on screen, and a C1 would be a Feldon's Cane, for example. So Antiquities has this weird old way of different rarities. So in this case, some commons are more common than other commons. And the way that I want to build this set cube is I want to have like eight to 10 players for this cube. And that means with the distribution of the different rarities, I will need 12 Argivian blacksmiths. I will also need 12 artifact ward I do have 12, if I recall correctly, so those are 4, 4, and another 4. So I do have 12 Artifact Ward, and I'm done with that, I don't need more. These Circle of Protection Artifacts are U3s, I do need 3 of those. That means 3 of those appeared on the Uncommon Print Sheet, and only one of this one, since this is a U1. A U2 for example, is an Ashnot's Battle Gear, which appeared twice on the Uncommon Print Sheet. The Martyrs is another U3, I only have two of, therefore I need another one of these to complete the set and be able to finish it. And the Reverse Polarity I also need 12 of, and I have nine right now, so I need three more. Let's look into the blue cards and talk a little more about when I'm able to play my set cube. So blue, as you can see, I am actually missing quite a lot of, as we already established. There are seven different cards. Energy Flux, Hercules Recall, Power Artifact, and Transmute Artifact are still missing in the set. These are oft quite expensive, and I just could not, was not able to afford them yet. And what is even worse is that Power Artifact and Transmute Artifact are both U3 cards, which means they were as common or uncommon as however you want to see it as a Circle of Protection Artifacts. So this is as rare as a Transmute Artifact, just to put it into perspective. And actually the Argivian Archaeologist is rarer than a transmute or power artifact. Now how I try to do a set cube is this. I try to accumulate the cheaper cards first and be, and then I'm able to play the set cube faster and 
earlier than if I would when I would just accumulate the most expensive ones first, right? So I have eight here. I need 12 of the Drafnas Restoration, so still four missing. The Reconstruction, I have only three of. I actually also need 12 of these. Fun fact about Reconstruction, the Antiquity symbol is missing. Uh, this is a misprint that is on all the reconstructions. They they just forgot it to print it on there. So that's nothing nothing special. Like it is not worth more or anything. They are all the same. And lastly, the Sage of Latnam. I actually do have twelve of, if I recall correctly. So these are four and four. And yeah, these I got from one seller, if I call that recall that correctly. And he just wanted like 350 per piece. And this is just cheaper than buying them one by one from different sellers and paying shipping more often. So I just took the opportunity and bought them all from one seller and never have to think about them anymore. So to be able to play blue in the set cube, I will have to accumulate a couple more of the uncommons maybe at least one of each so that I can have this experience of playing blue and then the antiquity set cube and accumulate accumulate the rest throughout the upcoming months. Now let's hit to the black cards and find out a little more about the color distribution you want to do when you try to accumulate cards for your set cubes. So here in black, I have five of the seven different black cards that exist in Antiquities. Only the Haunting Wind, which you saw in another video as well about uh, finance. And I think this card is very good in Commander as well with all the treasure mechanics going on. Um, check out the video when you're done with this one and find out more about my thoughts of about this card and why I have so many actually. So this one is the only one I have completed of all the black cards. I still need the Zenic Poltergeist, which is a U3, and the Yagmoth Demon, which I was actually able to find online, but the person had a white-bordered one here seen on screen. The white-bordered one is from Chronicles, and you really have to watch out for people that are either trying to scam people, which I don't think or hope, um, but they just don't know, I think, and um, they think they have a 20, 30 euro card, and it's just worth five cents if it's from Chronicles. That's how high the difference is between those two versions. So I was not able to get the Yagmoth Demon yet, but I'm still looking for a good opportunity at a great price. With my The Dark Cube, I had a similar story where I got a Witch Hunter from Chronicles in White Border actually twice. I ordered twice from different sellers, got White Border, Chronicle, Witch Hunters, even though I wanted a Witch Hunter from the dark. And from then on, when I saw a seller on Card Market that just had a couple of hundred sales, I wrote those persons and I told them, please see if this card is Black Border. Though on the other hand, I ordered a The Wretched from Legends from a commercial seller and I got a white bordered chronicles one so buying from commercial traders also doesn't give you any security that you get the card you're ordering but you get less problems probably than with private sellers though i did not have any problems i told them they are from chronicles white border and i just want my money back and actually also shipping because i ordered just this card and paid shipping for their, that and most of the time they're fine all of them were actually fine so now let's dig into the artifact procession. We have nine out of 12. This is another C4, so three more to go. This as well, um, eight Phyrexian Gremlins, so four more. Gate to Phyrexias, I actually got before the buyouts of 2020. I got it September. So I guess some buyout happened up to that point, but I got it at the very beginning. So this one is actually quite used and I might switch it out at some point, though I don't think it's that noticeable through the matte dragon shield sleeves. If you take it out, you see the whitening. 
but if you have it in the sleeves, you don't notice it as bad. So I think I will play with them until I get a nice deal on this gate to Firex. I think the front is worse than the back. And this one is a really nice and crisp one. So I need one more since this is a U3 card. This is as uncommon as a transmute artifact. Haunting Wind we already saw. And the Priest I think is another great commander card for black artifact decks. So I have here four, another four and three. So only one is missing. And I think I already ordered one. So this one should arrive in the next couple of days. Let's clean this up and look into the red cards and talk about the financial value for the future of these cards. Now I have four out of the seven existing Antiquities cards. I actually ordered five Atogs, which should also arrive and be seen in my next cardboard haul video. And I ordered two of the three woven weaponsmiths that I still need. And the U1, the rare card, is the Shatter Storm, which I also don't have, but is also quite expensive and will be one of the last cards I will probably get for this set, since it's just not essential, though probably quite impactful with a set that exists of so many artifacts. So Artifact Blast I should actually have enough of. That's four, four, and another four. I just love this card. This is such an unknown card and it's also such a unique card for a commander as well. Being able to counter an artifact spell with the red, with all the artifacts going around is just so awesome. So these I don't need. I actually have a couple of spears for commander decks, which I am also playing. Detonate should be a U3, so I need one more of these. These are also U3s. I need two more of these. Uh, this one was one that I only paid one euro for back in 2017. So I'm quite glad that I still had this. That's I think I bought for a Mishra commander deck and I took it apart at some point and I kept this card. So glad I have this. I need two more of that. And the Orcish mechanics, I think I have completed as well. Financially, I think all these cards will at some point do the same as Arabian Nights commons and uncommons will, and rares as well, obviously. We already see cards like Mishra's Workshop hitting like 2,000 euros or, or dollars, or even more. And when you look at the commons of antiquities, you find some for, for like about 50 cents a piece, but these are like the very cheap and bad ones, probably <laughs> these, for example. And then there are like better ones, which are already like three euros, like the Artifact Blast. And when you look at Arabian Nights commons, you probably can't find any for like under, under five bucks, I think. And this is a pattern that will eventually hit the Antiquities cards, but also the Legends and eventually the, the Dark cards. This was my reasoning why I started building set cubes out of these old cards and accumulating them, since I didn't want to miss out on that, but also have like a financial factor built into the set cube. If I ever wanted to sell my collection or the set cube, I could sell it for probably way more than I paid, and in a couple of years, probably even more. So if you're thinking about getting into vintage mag magic, if I inspired you to also build a set cube, get the cheap commons first and start accumulating the rares one by one if you find nice deals. Let's get out the green cards. Another factor that I find so beautiful about building a set cube is that you're able to play a piece of history, of magic history. A piece of magic history that most of the people, even in 19... 94 were not able to play since they probably were only able to 
buy like one or two booster packs, crack them, take some of the cards out and throw the rest into a corner. And like drafting was not something that was invented yet. So being able to build such a draft experience out of such an old set just felt so right. And many of us didn't, didn't even play then. So for example, me, I started with like Mercadian Masks Invasion. So I didn't even really know the reserved list and all the history that started back then. And Antiquities cards I didn't see until recently, probably. I can't recall when exactly. Maybe with the Goblin Artisans that we saw earlier, somewhere around there. And even then I didn't know what the Antiquities set was rather than like a couple of old cards. So yeah, sharing that with friends and family is just such a nice experience. In my very first video, I talk about my story of the two The Dark drafts we did with my The Dark set. We even got three more people into magic and it was just like such a wonderful experience. Now, as you can see, we only have four of the seven possible cards in Antiquities. Argothian Pixies I still need, which are C4, I need 12 of. And I think I ordered a couple, maybe, I don't know exactly how many. So these should also appear in the next mail day video. What else? The Gaius Avenger, which is the rare, the one of the green antiquities cards and titania song which can also be from chronicles so watch out for those a gothian tree folk i have all 12 off so i'm done with that another reserved list the citadel druid i have two of i still need one i'm not sure if i ordered that we shall see in the next video crumble i have two places, so I still need four more, since this is another C4. Also such a good card in the set, being able to destroy at instant speed some artifact and giving some life back, I think is very useful. And lastly, another of my investments, the Power Leech. It's a U3, so I have all of them and all the ones I need and a couple more for future investments or commander decks if wizards continues pushing treasures and maybe even life gain i think these cards are only going to go up and with the recent buyout i'm very glad i bought those around may this year by the way another reason why i started building the vintage set cube is the obvious fact that you have reserved list cards in there which will only go up in the future so even if all the commons the agothian treefall would not go to like five bucks a piece the reserved list cards certainly will go up and I can make a profit easily with those. Now, lastly, the artifacts, which is the biggest chunk of the set. All right, and a couple of non-basic lands. So let's start with the artifacts, which should end around here. There, there they end. So Antiquities is such a big artifact set it has 44 different artifacts so you have seven of these and almost as many different artifacts as there are colored cards so half of the set almost roundabout is artifacts so that's that's just crazy i think i think they only did it again in mirrodin where they have like so many artifacts in so let's split them apart and see which ones I have. I'm not sure if I will go over all the artifacts I still need since they will be quite a lot with 44 cards, 44 artifacts, but we'll see. So that should be it. There are more artifacts to come, so we'll have a second part of artifacts. Let's see about the amulet. We have one place up to three. So that's 12 amulets. A card which I think is okay in a draft environment. Being able to prevent one damage, I think is pretty neat. We have an Ashnot's Altar, which I had in a short, which was stated in worse condition, but just had a minor binder ding and I think something around in the corner, but like from afar it looks so nice 
almost near mint. The battle gear, which I already stated, is a U2. So that means these appear twice as often as the archaeologist, while, for example, the haunting winds appeared three times on the print sheet, which is why I put this one in the set twice, obviously. So let's stack them like this. Battering ram, I still need 11 of. So I have one, which is, I think, a little... Let's just use it on the front here. It has some whitening here and there. Uh, and a little bent corner here. But like, it's totally fine to play with. I normally don't buy cards that are worse than like moderately played or in European terms, which are not worse than LP, which is a different LP than the American LP. Clay statue, I need another seven of a dragon engine as well. In between cards like Curse Drag, Coral Helm, Colossus of Zardia, where I got a German black border one in another video. That was sad. Uh, I still need that. Clockwork, Avian. The Candelabra will be one of the last cards, obviously, I'm gonna get. Ashnot's Transmogrant and Armageddon Clock are still missing. Grapeshot Catapult, I think we have nine of. So three more. A Mightstone, I think I actually need three of. Let me check. Yeah, three, so two more. With the Brothers War coming, people are specking on this one and the weak stone to go up since they will be probably part of the history and the storyline of the upcoming set. So if you're unsure and want to get some of these, get them now before they go up. And if you hear some snoring in the background, it's my dog, by the way. I need 12 of these. So got one. Paid like almost five euros for this one. So you see like these iconic cards are already like five euros and this one is a beat up version like it has whitening on the on the edge just seeing how how wanted those cards are is quite crazy primal clay i need only two more of since it's a u3 this is as rare as a transmute artifact and its effect is rather meh but oh well every set has bad rares obviously or uncommons or whatever you want to use as a term this one i actually have all i need of yeah this is a u3 so i have three of so i don't need more the staff staff of zegan i think i need one more or so two more i have 10 so maybe i even ordered those i don't know for sure we'll see in the next cardboard Hall. Now, second part of the artifacts. Let's switch those piles. This one is a U3, the Taunus's weaponry. I will still need another one of these. The tablet, I think I completed. Four, four, and four. Correct. So I don't need any more of these. What do they do? You gain one life. Whenever one of your artifacts dies for one mana, I guess that's okay. By the way, did you know the difference between these two? Because earlier, things I wasn't used to earlier, I said this one is pretty okay for two mana, being able to prevent one damage. But the difference between those two is this is a mono artifact and this is a poly artifact. That's a thing I didn't didn't take into account. So mono artifact actually means you have to tap it. This was a thing that was added later. So you always have to check if it's a mono or a poly artifact. Poly artifact you can activate multiple times, even though it says obviously you can only activate it once per artifact that dies, but the mono artifact you could not be able to use except when you have something to untap it again. So keep that in mind. So this card is actually quite bad, but I guess preventing one damage if you have two or three out could prevent like, oh, I don't know. That's, I don't know. I don't think it's a good card to include then. This one probably better since it was a poly artifact. Now, another poly artifact, the Chalice. This one gives you a life whenever someone casts an artifact spell. So maybe this one is better. I have 
four, four, three. I still need one. I think I also ordered that. We shall see. Then the Wall of Spheres, which is a U3, so I need two more. And lastly, the Weak Stone. Weak Stone and Might Stone are both cards that might be in the Brothers War history. I think there's even a poster where you can see them in their hand or something. I'm not very sure and not very, very much tracking the story, but like, it's an interesting fun fact, I suppose. So, and lastly, let's check the non-basic lands. Antiquities did not have a basic land cycle. Neither did Arabian Nights. They had the mountain, I suppose, which is like hundreds of Euro euros and even obviously then uh, dollars. But neither did Legends or the Dark. I think Ice Age was the next set that had the basic land cycle again, and they got snow covered lands as well. So you have the Ursa land cycle. I only have mines and power plants, so I need a whole couple of more Tron lands and obviously the Mishra's factory, the workshop, which will be one of the last cards. Strip mines are also in there, which I also did not buy yet since they're just a little, a little too expensive for me right now. But these I got for like under five euro each and I think you can still find some on card market for that price. They are used, but I think still worth it to have an original Tron land black border English with the nice anvil symbol. And by the way, if you do create a card market account, consider adding me as a referral. This would support the channel and I would be very thankful. So now let's check. This is the Urza mine, the tower version, if you want to call it like that, but it is a mine. This one, by the way, is more common than the mouth or the pulley version. So this one was twice as often on the sheet as well as this one. These are both double as often. They are C2s, both of them, than the other two versions. Similarly, the Ursus Power Plant Rock in Pot version is a C2. By the way, I'm not sure if I said that yet, but like of the C2s, I need six each, while for the C1s, I need three of each to get enough to build the set cube and also to keep the distribution. So here I actually only still, still only need one to complete the set of the rock in the pot power plant. Lastly, the bug version of the power plant. I have another three of, and I am still missing one. So this was my look into the Antiquities set cube. If you liked that, do leave me a like and feedback if you enjoyed what you saw. I could do the same for the Legends and my Portal 3 Kingdoms set so that you can watch along and track what I'm getting and also see at what pace I'm getting my cards so that you know that you do not have to rush and get all the cards at once. Stay positive, enjoy your cardboard rectangles, and I see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.